Another great entry, this time from S. Ben. I, I really enjoyed this. This is so sophisticated and and clever and and I feel that like in a lot of its restraint it is bringing out the musical meaning a lot clearer than perhaps you know I did with my big tutees I, I think it's just beautifully constructed I love the interdependence of the parts I love how the orchestra supports and complements and interacts Really, just some lovely, lovely orchestration. So, I'm just going to jump straight into the evaluation criteria and talk about how this score addresses it, and I'll point out some really fun things along the way. First of all, <clears throat> the issue of pitch weight in the upper middle register of the orchestra. That's addressed. That's not a big problem. Uh, the thematic material repeating, possibly sounding repetitive if orchestrated the same way. Now here, we have essentially the same approach twice. However, there is the addition of these you know, big strokes here from lower, um, from the uh, lower heavy brass, and from the strings. Just, just really, just big, you know, uh, really big direct scoring. I almost feel like you could get a better effect here, Espen, if you. In, instead of having accented staccato, if you had an eighth note with a tenuto mark over it, right? Or a tenuto accent. So, you know, vroom, you know, just that real zooming sound, but then a, just a very sudden release, right? And then have the same exact articulation in your lower, um, <clears throat> your lower heavy brass and your horns and your lower winds. And then, you know, I just, I just think they would just have this really just direct hammer blow. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but that is enough, you know, just that simple touch is enough of a variation to, you know, for the copy pasting of these two sections to be justified. Now, as to like the similar effects that are happening here, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to obsess over that, especially since there's such a big change and the, you know, once again, the interdependency of the parts is is remarkable. So, <clears throat> so you know, what makes it all so special? I, I just I really love the emphasis on the downbeat and the fact that the horns, or excuse me, the trumpets are the uh, are essentially like playing an interpretation of the of the piano part, right? And then everybody else is just really complimenting. So you've got that rah, 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 bwomp, and then you have all of your double reeds in a big stack. Uh, oboes on the top, English horn in the middle, and then bassoons an octave lower. Bum, 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 right? And then dun, 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 dun. I like the fact that you complete the phrase, dun, 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 and then just leading to bum, 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 and then the same thing again. Of course, you know, some some emphasis from the other instruments, horns and flutes and strings. So that all works really, really nice. Nice high trombone scoring. You know, one little thing here, though. See, now that, that just looks better to me. And then here... Uh, just drop this in there, right? And so that just, yeah, that's a lot more readable uh, for the score reader and for the trombonist. Not that it makes a huge difference to score all those stacked ledger lines. It's just, you know, more of a convention and just more in the character of concert music. Now, um, our next concern, melodic development soaring quite high to the uppermost orchestral register. And I love this. The piccolo just waits to the very, very last minute and comes in. Bum, 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 bum. Um, and, and I notice that you're slightly underplaying it, right? You have the accent here on the mezzo forte, and then you have the piccolo coming in at mezzo piano and then increasing towards forte. It's very, very effective because you're, you know, the, the sound of the piccolo is already going to be kind of getting towards extreme getting above the staff so it is a good way of taming it and then then you've got um once again 
uh, a stack of octaves here. Piccolo on top, oboe below that, English horn below that, and then bassoons coming in to the bottom, right? And then pushing towards this forte. And since there is going to be cumulatively more sound if you complete the phrase, very, very clever that you are bringing in uh, stronger elements here on the downbeat. And of course, this push into the downbeat from here. Now, you have a lot of unnecessary uh, instructions to the strings about how they should bow. They are going to know that on a uh, on the upbeat to the next bar, on a crescendo, that they should be using an up bow. You don't need to tell them that, right? It's it's kind of like, um, you know, it's it's kind of like telling somebody, you know, giving somebody directions uh, how to get to the supermarket and saying, you know, when you get to the stop sign, if it's red, make sure that you wait before you, you know, wait till it turns green before you turn right, you know. <laughs> It's it's that it's that level of of um, what do they call it like uh, like kind of like having um, handlebars on your handlebars right you don't need to add that and then there are a couple of places later on where you suggest a certain type of uh, bowing pattern which I will I have a few different ideas about all right now let's go back to our melodic development soaring quite high and, and here, this is so great, you just bring everything to a stop and you have your strings coming in uh, quite a bit lower, playing a triple octave, dropping down, right? Like this is this is this high B right here, so you're dropping down an octave. You just let the, you let the um, overtones do all the work of filling in the space that's left after this high B. And then everybody comes back in and just soars up to this high E. So that is a really great way of solving it. And I really love the subito piano right in here. That's really, really effective as well. Um, yeah, I mean, just such great, as I was saying before, such great interactions between parts, interdependencies, uh, and 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 um, the proportions, right? Like, uh, uh, orchestration is so much about, is so much proportional, right? You know, is is this section balanced with that one before it dynamically, expressively, emotionally? Like, are you giving the payoff too soon? Are you um, are you really making it worthwhile for everybody to play it and listen to it? You know, those issues. So, ending the phrase here, coming in on the second beat. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. I just I just love this so much that you have that you're stating the melody here just in first horn uh, or first and third horn and octaves if, if you will uh, and and the and the first horn below so we got this bum 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 and then you bring in the strings I feel this is extremely effective having nothing but um our our brass section some lower winds and strings just for a little bit of depth and and support especially as we bring in the lower heavy brass and you know of course like a little snare drum and castanets but the main point is that you're letting your um your violins state the little melodic hook right and i feel that that answers the whole question of like you know what to do with this section right in here. And and it is such a beautiful contrast to everything that is happening before it that it really stands out unique, right? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, it is, it is you're just really a, a great interpretation of what to do there. And then we're going to yup, up, 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 and then bringing in more elements. This is very similar to what I did, having the first and seconds play in harmony and then joining together as the lower strings come in and the part gets lower and lower and you know just adding a little bit of clarinet and and uh, lower winds and so on so so that is a nice segue uh, to the next section uh, remember that the criterion for this little ending phrase to this whole passage was not just maintaining a driving staccato, 
but also transitioning smoothly into the next passage. And I feel that you did that very, very well uh, by having, you know, bringing down the volume to piano and then crescendo to forte, just you know, adding your own your own uh, dynamic interpretation in there. And I feel it's extremely effective. Now, here's where I part ways a little bit with you on, in terms of in terms of bowing, you know, you're going down, 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 up, down. I, 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 you know, I mean, I feel like staccato is better for up bow and tenuto is better for down bow, if you know what I mean. And especially as there's no implied crescendo or anything like that right in here. Um, I feel that it would just be better to go down, 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 up, down. Right? I, I think that that's just a stronger, more natural thing for the players to do. And I don't know if you've seen all of these evaluations, but I was commenting before in a few evaluations ago about uh, some similar passages that I'd seen where, you know, we will just have this natural impulse to do a Stravinsky thing by throwing in a bunch of down bows. But it wasn't really marked. It's, uh, it's a passage in... Uh, symphony fantastique where you, you really just you have this have this heavy kind of repeated accents and so on and the orchestra that who's recording I have gracious permission to use in my lecture videos uh, they are just playing down up down up you know and and they're they're sounding just as heavy and just as regular every single time right so I would say that like don't do the all the down bows in a row unless you just really want that mechanical, like almost mechanical sound, you know, or just like pounding sound, right? Just something really kind of primitive and aggressive about it, uh, whether that is in Stravinsky or in Borodin. But it works really, really well in conjunction with horns, right? But you know, once again, I just feel like tenuto, a tenuto marking on an up bow is it's possible of course and it happens all the time but it, when you're separating <clears throat> the um when you're separating things out like this then it really is better to have a down bow on it that's just you know that's my two cents okay um my only possible comment in here is since you've got the weight of the horns and the violins working together here the the cellos are a bit lonely in terms of their weight you know, uh, ba ba ba, yet da 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 da, and then you've got the the da 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 da, da right? Um, I feel that they're a bit naked. You've got forte strings, forte bass, <laughs> forte, and then mezzo forte, right? Um, so I just really feel that that uh, that maybe doubling this with um you know, doubling this with bassoon, or maybe you could double the upper parts with clarinet or something like that there, or bass clarinet, maybe you could double this with bass clarinet. And then that would, that would fill in the weight that is sort of missing for the cellos in here. Because I, th I think the cellos could easily be overwhelmed by the power of the, uh, especially if you're, if you really are going to add these, uh, all these uh, down bows in a row. It's just really an emphatic solid sound and the cellos are, are missing out in terms of their power. Now, overall, judging this passage, contrast of color, breadth of texture, and middle register scoring, I feel you, that you address that perfectly well. I'll comment on that as we go. Maintaining differenti differentiated roles in closely spaced melodies, overlapping accompaniment figures, you solve that problem as well. And I'm going to talk about that now with a little bit of thought of, of the other concern of adding like those those high E's uh, where the the left hand sort of leaps over the right hand and kind of hits uh, an E up there just because it can. <laughs> Posing a problem for us like uh, what do we do with it as orchestrators? Do we you know do we add it in as we have here? Do we just ignore it? Um, do we make it a part of the overall rhythm? What do we do with it? All right now here you've chosen to throw in like octaves here, um, intervals, and so on. It, that is a lot of weight, uh, even at mezzo forte, just on that one single note. You might have done better here just to have like um, 
first trumpet above, trumpets two and three below, get rid of the trombone, right? And just do that here and here. And because I feel like despite the fact that the mock-up is is taming what's going on in here, it really will, you know, you'll hear that beep, you know, bum, 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 you know, just really hear that beep, just really pushing through the texture. And the same thing here, especially coming in at a sort of an odder place. And then this is totally fine. It might be interesting to mellow this with maybe accompanying it by violins to sort of, you know, bring, to take off some of the edge. Maybe just get rid of the accent as well in all of these places. Okay, um, now, once again, we're, your cello is a bit underpowered compared to everybody else with all this extreme doubling, right? I think this is really cool. Atu oboes, English horn below doubling violas. That's that's a very, very fun sound. Keeping in mind that the the oboe sound above is not going to be that beautiful, um, what they call artless, you know, innocent kind of a sound. When you put two oboes together on the same pitches like this, they become more trumpet-like, right? So not so innocent. But I would, I would still say double your cellos with something, whether it's bassoon or bass clarinet or something, somebody available, but who, you know, like who combines really, really well in staccato. <clears throat> and, you know, and then differentiation of roles, it's, it's a little hard when everything is in the horns and in the, uh, and in the strings, you know, the ba 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 you know, it's just, it doesn't really quite come through as its own individual line. Uh, but I do like the fact that you drop an octave, right? You don't just do the same thing, um, you know, the bum 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 is not, you know, it, it is more respecting the spirit of the of the uh, arrangement rather than keeping everything as high as possible. It's really, really nicely done. And yeah, and then just these four notes need some doubling. Now we're getting to our triplet section keeping the triplets from overwhelming the melodic line above. This is really similar scoring to the last uh, the last entry where there was just a lot of weight in the upper strings playing that and then the, there were triplets in the rest of the orchestra. Now here we have triplets just in the uh, in the clarinet, right? We have the burirum, burirum, and here is uh, differentiated roles done very, very nicely. And here is differentiated roles, very done very, very nicely. Here we have differentiated roles realized very, very nicely, I feel. And everything has got some space. The strings are weighty enough to where they will not be overwhelmed by the other functions around them. And here you're adding a little bit of a pad behind them. And this is all perfectly possible. And you have balanced the um, you balance the dynamics, uh, which is nice. Uh, I would say it's a little strange though that you're sort of you're sort of filling in the warmth right in here, and then you're crescendoing there. I mean, it kind of does work in a way because like you're increasing. The volume here and you're taking out the horns so that there's no competition right um, and then bringing them back in again I, I, I mean it, it kind of works uh, about the only critique I would say in the here is if there could have been some other instrument that eventually takes over on the uh, on the triplets a little bit more individually, right? Here you have like doubling from above by flute. That's very effective because everything is fairly tame. Although by the time you come in here with um, with your stacked oboe family members, it will really kind of blot out anything that the flute is doing in here in terms of subtlety. Um, and, you know, and then you've got bassoon doubling cello and that all works very, very nice. Contra bassoon doubling uh, double basses. That's all fun. Now here you sort of drop them, you drop out the doubling as if to not interfere perhaps with the sound of the flute above and maybe the uniqueness of the first 
clarinet part, it that's fine. I, I, I mean, you just have to judge for yourself whether or not it is worth it to to pull back on the weight of the of the string part right in here. And then <clears throat> here you're bringing in your harp, right? Harp should be marked, I would say, mezzo forte, right? Or poco forte or something like that. It should be louder than mezzo piano. Yeah, but it's you know beautiful. That there's a beautiful pastoral sound here. I really love this octave right in here. You've got uh, your flutes playing very very softly in sort of middle and lower register, and then right here you've got the bass clarinet playing an octave below that. That's it's just fantastic. It's almost like throwing in an alto flute or bass flute part to accompany your other flutes. <coughs> Very nicely done. And then, of course, you know, coming on the heels of this other stuff. I would say it's perfectly fine for you to go down to piano here, right? Because, like, why does it have to always be mezzo piano, right? Why can't you go down to piano here, have this come in here a little softer uh, in the English horn so it doesn't really overwhelm. So it goes down to, the English horn goes down to piano here and then fades out to pianissimo. And that way this is set up a lot better. And then everybody's playing piano, and then you can have your harp playing mezzo piano or mezzo forte. And then you can really, really hear it, right? So yeah, just once again, just, just a wonderfully creative score and so many, you know, so many ways that you have solved some of my criteria or maybe been thinking along parallel lines and yet done completely your own thing. I'm, you know, this is... Um, there are very few other scores doing the exact things that you're doing, right? Um, a lot of times you see people using similar strategies, and and I, you know, uh, and I am just as guilty of that as everybody else. There are a lot of strategies that I use that I saw that I'm seeing other orchestrators use as well, and there's some things in here that are similar to my scores as well. But like the overall impression is of a very unique approach, very unique. That doesn't, <laughs> very unique. It's sort of, that's almost like being mostly pregnant. Okay, the the impression is of a unique approach here. And uh, I, I think that that is something you should definitely build on as an orchestrator and as a composer. It's just really working on interdependency between lines and uniqueness and um, quality of color and things like that. You're really going for those in your orchestrations, and I feel that it's completely commendable. The only regret that I have about this that's that's all that strong is that you didn't score the entire thing and and enter it as a um, at a higher level that would give me an entire hour to talk about, right? But I think I've talked about it enough. I just think it's really great. It's such a fun score. So many cool things for us all to learn from, and I hope that that any of my suggestions have been useful to you, even if it's just to completely defy them and do your own thing. <laughs> that That is the best outcome for me. So thank you so much, S. Ben. Thank you for being a part of this uh, orchestration challenge and for sending me a, a score that challenges me to be better in my task of evaluating scores. And everybody out there watching this, Patreon supporters, website subscribers, casual viewers, I really appreciate you being part of this community. And please leave some comments. Let this orchestrator know what you thought about their work and their effort. And if you have any suggestions for them or insights or even just a compliment, I'm sure that he would appreciate it. And I'm sure that... Um, you know their their comments on other or other uh, <coughs> excuse me other videos and entries will also be interesting to see. So thanks everybody, and I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break for breakfast, and then I'm going to go on and evaluate a couple more scores today. Thanks all. See you soon. <laughs>